What's going on guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 motherboard. Before we jump into things, the first thing is how do I get to this screen? If you're wondering how do I get to the screen when I turn on my computer, when you boot up your system and you hit that power button, just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard. Just keep on hitting it and you'll be dropped into this menu not your backspace, just hit that delete key and you'll be good to go. Now this BIOS should be very similar across the Gigabyte X870 as well as X870E motherboards. Obviously, depending on which board you have, some of your options may be a little bit different, but the overall layout should be the same. Now, when you do get dropped into the BIOS, you should be here in easy mode and you can toggle very easily between easy and advanced mode right up here. Super easy to, you know, go ahead and do that. Now, one thing I like about this BIOS is that you have these tabs at the top for really easy things like help. That brings up your help menu. You can switch your language. You can load defaults, save and exit. You have your favorites menu. And then you can also search. That's one thing that's really nice. If you can't, you don't know where a certain setting is, you can just search right in the BIOS, which is great. Over here, we have all of our information. So we can see what motherboard we're running, what version of the BIOS we're running, the CPU, RAM, and our version, our AGESA version. So you want to make sure that you have the latest version, of course, with patches and everything like that. So you have that there as well. Over here, we have some real-time stats, our CPU frequency, memory frequency, system temperature, CPU temperature, and CPU voltage. Come down here, this is all, you know, everything for your memory. So you can see how much memory you have installed and everything like that. You can enable or disable the DDR5 auto booster. And then this is where you can easily enable your XMP or Expo profile. So this has uh, an XMP profile on it. We can enable it and we're good to go. Really easy to do that. Over here, we have some quick access as well. So we can have quick access to QFlash, which allows you to easily flash your BIOS. We have, you know, we click this, get right into our SPD info and then STB, SPD setup. We can go into there very easily as well. And then the th other things like resizable bar support that's enabled by default. But if you want to disable or enable it right here, CSM support, preferred op operating mode it's set to auto but you can do easy mode or advanced mode so say you always want to jump into the advanced mode as soon as you go into the bios you can just set that to advanced mode if you want fast boot you can enable or disable that and then the multi-theme auris auris bright or auris or grayscale so you can pick like the theme of this bios if you want and then you can enable or disable erp in the middle here we have our fans that are connected so our CPU fan, that's the only thing we have connected here. You can see that it's running in the, the actual speed in real time. You can also jump right into SmartFan 6, which is a nice graphical interface showing you all of your fan headers, all of your pump headers. You can control them individually. You can set your own curves. You can set, you know, normal, silent, manual, full speed auto on every header on the board, which is nice. And then you can see all of your temperatures and everything like that in real time. Well, Really easy to go ahead and do this in the bio. So I like that. And then we have, you know, what we have connected here. So our X16 slot, we have a graphics card in there. And then our M.2, we have a uh, NVMe drive installed and then our boot sequence. So again, we only have one drive, but if you have multiple drives, you could easily drag and drop these to set your boot sequence. So that's everything in the easy mode. Again, it's easy. Everything is, you know, super easy to find. I think the biggest things that you're gonna to wanna to change here is an enable your XMP or Expo profile or set your boot sequence. That's pretty much all you'll really need to do for the most part on a first boot up, you know, when you're installing Windows. Now, if we into advanced mode, you're first dropped into the tweaker tab. Again, these tabs do change at the top. So we have our tweaker tab at the top now, but there is a favorites menu. You can add any option that's in the BIOS into this favorites menu, really easy to do. So you don't have to go through like maybe two or three menus to find a setting that you change all the time. It's all right here. Now tweaker is where you're gonna do all of your tweaking, all of your system tuning is done here. I'm not gonna go over all of these settings, but it's really easy to see what does what and everything here is on this page. So you have like 
CPU clock control, your ratios, everything like that. You can go into advanced CPU settings. But one thing I noticed in this tweaker menu is that typically when you're going through menus, let me just go here, say I go to this IO ports menu. If I hit escape on my keyboard, oh, that no, doesn't do it. So it's in a lot of these menus where you can't go back. It's really weird. So if I go to advanced CPU settings, I hit escape. I can't go back to the previous menu. It wants me to save. I have to hit this, then hit this, and now I'm back. Um, that's one issue with this BIOS, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not sure why it does that. But if you go into like sub menus, you can't go back sometimes. If you hit escape, it just wants you to save. So not the biggest fan of that. But again, all of your settings here, again, your XMP and Expo profiles are here. You can go into advanced memory settings and you can go into all of your sub timings here. Let's see if we hit escape. So we can hit escape there and go back. Your SPD info, same thing as we shown before. And ST SPD setup, same thing as we did show before as well. Um, go out, see now it's not letting me go back. So I have to hit settings and then go to tweaker again. Uh, your voltages are all in this menu as well. So your vCore, all of your DDR voltages, everything is right here. You can also go into advan advanced voltage settings in here and change things and your VDDG, VDDG voltage control in here as well so you can set all of that and again i can't go all the way back for some reason so i have to hit settings and then go back to tweaker and then you can do your cpu vrm settings and this is your load line calibration and it's kind of nice that they show you the scaling over here on the side and again you can set your load line calibration really easily just by double clicking and change it if you are doing overclock here and you wanted to change it you can easily do that let's try to hit escape and see if we can go back and we cannot again that's the issue with this BIOS. So we did settings and then go back to tweaker. Now we're back to the menu, but that's everything in the tweaker menu. Really easy to have, you know, have everything here on this one page. I just wish it, when we went into sub menus, we could just hit escape and go back. We, we can't for some reason. Now we go into settings. That's everything else that's on the board. So platform power, again, just power related settings, res resume on alarm and everything like that. Can we go back? No, we cannot go back. So we have to go over here and then go over here. And then we're back to the main menu again. IO port. So this is everything again that's on the board. So you can enable or disable integrated graphics, the audio controller, uh, bitfurcation on the X16 slot. You can set that up if you need to. Uh, resizable bar support, uh, discrete USB 4 feature. So this is everything to do with USB 4 and the different features. Now, see if we can hit escape and go back. Oh, we can on now. So uh, Gigabyte Utilities downloader, downloader Configuration. So when you install Windows for the first time, you're going to get a pop-up on the screen that's going to say download the Gigabyte Utilities uh, or Gigabyte Control Center. And for a lot of people, this is going to be a really good thing. But if you don't want that, you can enable or disable it here. It is enabled by default. It just allows you to easily download all of your drivers and utilities in one place. I think for most people, it's fine. USB configuration, again, everything to do with USB here. NVMe configuration, again, you can just see your drive and click into your drive and get more options for the drives that you do have installed. SATA configuration, no SATA drives installed as you can see, but you can set different SATA settings in here as well. Network stack configuration, again, we don't have anything connected and you can set up the 2.5 gig controller. You can see all the information on that. So really easy to again, go through all these settings and change things depending on what you have installed. And again, we can't go back to our settings menu. We can't hit escape for some reason. So we have to go over here. Now we're back into the main settings menu. Under miscellaneous, you have things like your link slot speeds, 3D Mark 01 enhancements, trusted computing. So you can go in here and set up trusted computing settings and things like that. Hit escape. Can we go back? Nope. So go back into settings. AMD CBS right here. Um, and this is all of your AMD CBS settings. I'm not going to go into all of these, but they're all right here. And then we go back to, wait a second. Let's say this again. AMD overclocking settings. And you have to hit accept every time you do this. And then like manual CPU overclocking. This is where all of your overclocking settings are going to be. So if you go in here, you can set all of your different settings here. Really easy to go ahead and do all of that. And then PC Health, this is just going to give you a live readout of all of your voltages in real time. So if there is something going on, you can kind of see right here if you want to. 
So really easy to go through and see all of those things. Again, if we go to system info, this is gonna give you again, all of the information on your system. So the BIOS that your BIOS version that you're running, the, you know, AGESA version, everything that's going on here, plugged in devices info. Again, this just shows you what SATA drives you have installed, what PCI Express stuff you have installed, what M.2 slots you have installed too. So for some reason, maybe you installed an M.2, Did, you didn't get it in there correctly. You can see if it's being detected by the motherboard, which is great. Um, and then why is it bringing you back to this weird menu here? Um, for some reason, we get back to this weird menu. See, this BIOS is a little tricky because we should be in system info and it brings us back to whatever that menu was. I'm not even sure. SPD info, again, same thing that just brings up that pop-up. And again, you can change your theme in here as well. And I believe you just have access to QFlash, which allows you to easily flash your BIOS. So I don't know where that weird menu is that keeps on coming up. I don't believe it's under settings. If we go, yeah, that's really weird. Whatever that menu is, um, so if I'd escape, it's not, it's not there. So I'm not sure where that weird menu that has all of those settings comes up at. Not, not honestly, not sure. It's, it's really weird. But the next tab over is going to be boot. So this is gonna, you're gonna allow you to set up your boot options your logo display, your fast boot, secure boot. You can set up administrator password as well as a user password in here. And then finally we have save and exit. So you can save and exit. You can load your optimized defaults. You can do a boot override, which is great for installing windows the first time from a flash drive. And you can save and you can load a profile. I didn't mention it over here as well. You can see some real time stats here as well. And then again, you have your help over here um, and, a, and another, you know, quick thing here for smart fan six, which brings it up. I like this BIOS. It's pretty easy to navigate, but again, there are those just weird things. Like again, if I go into advanced CPU settings, there's no way for me to hit escape and go out of this menu. I can't go back. I have to go like this and then go like this to go back. Really weird. I don't know why that's in the BIOS, but if I go into some other settings like IO ports, I hit escape, oh, I can't go back. But if I go into discrete USB features, I can hit escape to go back here, but then I can't go back here, which is a, a bit odd. So that I have to go like this and go like this, and now I'm back. It just makes it a little bit more difficult. That's why I say add your certain settings to your favorites menu here. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. Um, but overall, as a BIOS, it is, it is quite good. It's very easy to navigate. It's not sluggish either. Uh, our mouse tracking speed is fine as well. So it's not like super sluggish or anything like that. So if you do have any questions about this BIOS or any other Gigabyte X870 or X870E BIOS, definitely leave a comment below and I'll try to help you out. But if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.